What you talking about, Wilson? What's up, guys? Big D Wiz, OldSchoolStereo.com. Today, I'm going to work on setting up an ultra capacitor bank. But please realize, this is extremely dangerous. I don't want you to get hurt and then blame me. So, if you don't know what you're doing here, you don't know about electronics, then don't do it. But this is just showing you what I went through to set my capacitor banks up. So, check it out. Alright guys, so here you can see I've already set up one of the banks. I'm using the Maxwell boost caps. These are the 2.5 volt 2600 farad. Just kind of wanted to give you an overview here of all the components that we're going to use. So as you can see, the capacitors are strapped together. I uh, have them in series and I have seven of them, which is going to give us an equivalent voltage if they're charged all the way up of 17.5 volts. And I don't think I'll ever go that high, but I wanted the ability to be able to charge until a little over 15 volts and not have any concerns of overcharging. And I purchased these straps here off of eBay. These were not cheap. These are solid copper. 12 of them are $50 plus shipping. So they also sell just regular aluminum, but I decided to go copper. And um, also got some solid copper zero gauge terminals. Because what's going to happen is all, I've got four total banks. I've got 28 capacitors. And those of you who aren't good at math, seven times four, 28. I'm going to run seven in series and I'm going to have four banks total. So I'm going to have three other banks that are going to be paralleled off of this bank. Hopefully be able to charge or be able to test about anything I want to test. And the big controversy on the web is how to charge these things because like these came to me, they were fully discharged. They only had like 0.1 volts per unit and they can be charged up to two and a half. So what I found out is that th this cheap Chicago six volt slash 12 volt charger. What you talking about Wilson? Um, all I did was I set it on the six volt mode until I was able to get the capacitors up to a certain charge and then I switched over to 12 volts. I couldn't leave it on there the whole time. I just had to kind of touch it and let it go and let it charge slowly. But I'll show you that process as I get to it. All right, here you can see I've got the capacitors lined up. And what you may notice is I've already got them set up so they can go in series. So I have plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. As with anything else in electronics, you have a positive and a negative. Uh, so just think of this as your battery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each one first and test the voltage of each one. And then as I connect them up in series, I'm gonna check it just to make sure everything is good because I'm just overly cautious like that. All right, so I'll check this first one. They're pretty discharged. That's 0.17 volts. So I'll just keep checking all of them just to see what their voltage is. And if it shows up negative, that's fine. It just means I got the probes wrong. That one's 0.15. So when I put these two together, I should have the combination of 0.17 and 0.15. So let's go ahead and get the straps out. All right, again, I can't stress how important it is to be careful here and make sure you've got this right. I'm even wearing protective eyewear. See, protective eyewear, safety first. So what I'm gonna do is, again, verify minus plus. So we'll go ahead and we're gonna get these two strapped together. And then what we'll do is we'll test the voltage and we should have double the voltage that we had before. right at a volt, a little over a volt, 1.14. All right, so let's work on charging it now. All right, you can see we've got the voltmeter hooked up to the seven ultra caps and we're showing 1.14 volt. Uh, I've got the positive connection hooked up here to the four gauge wire that goes into the positive and the ultra cap. And I'm getting ready to plug this in, ensuring that my charger is set on the six volt setting. Get ready for some sparks. So as you can see, I'm just touching it here. What you talking about, Wilson? 
because these capacitors have an ultra low resistance and the charger will shut off if it gets too hot but i don't want to leave it on there too long you see the the charge counting up we're already at 1.7 volts All right, as you can see, it appears the six volt charge mode of this Chicago Harbor Freight, whatever it was, charger that I have, is charging well above six volts. So it looks like it may take it all the way up. I'm at right at nine volts right now, and it's doing a six amp charge. So if it stops, then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and switch it to the 12 volt six amp charge and finish it off. Should take it up to around 14 and a half volts. All right, there you see the 14.43 volts. That's charged up as much as, as this cheap old charger will do. But we've got the caps charged up to 14.4 volts. That's awesome. Now, the next thing that I always like to do is check each cap. Check the voltage from each one. Since I don't have balancing resistors on them, um, you need to make sure that none of them are above 2.5 to 2.6 volts. In case one of the caps is dead or something, then the other one's going to have to take over the charge. Just want to check that real quick and make sure I don't have a problem there. All right, like I said, I'm just going to check each cell just to make sure I don't have more than 2.5 volts. And right at two, looks like they're pretty well balanced. They're very close to two volts a piece. They can handle up to 2.5 volts, so we should be good there. All right, guys, there you have it. The um, initial video here from the ultra caps and put them together. Again, I'm gonna set up four banks total. So uh, I'll show you guys how I'm gonna mount it, mount it into an enclosure of some sort so I can wire them up and use them for my amp test. So stay tuned. Next video is coming soon. Until next time, I'm out of here. What you talking about, Wilson? We have several supporters at patreon.com slash old school stereo. And thank you guys for your support. It helps us get through the monthly costs involved with running old school stereo. And also these guys get behind the scenes perks and benefits that not everybody else gets to see. So if you'd like to support us for as little as $1 per month, check us out. Thanks for your support guys.